Hey everyone, welcome back to the RCF16 build. In this video, I'll be working on the vertical fin and the rudder. I'm going to build them up together as one piece and then later cut out and hinge the rudder. I designed the rudder split line into the molds. This will leave a groove in the skins and serve as a guide for cutting out the rudder later on. Let's get to it. I'm about to do the layups, but first I wanted to thank you all for your comments on preparing the molds. It seems like the best way forward is to use PVA after the wax. I'll give that a try in a future layup, but for today I wanted to use only wax just one more time. I want to test my theory that temperature and humidity affected the way the primer cured on the molds. If you recall, the lower fuselage that I laid up in my previous video released perfectly fine from the molds without any primer peeling off, and I only used wax in this mold. I sprayed the vertical fin molds on the same warm and dry day, so if my theory has any weight, I should be able to release the skins without any of the primer peeling off, even if I just use wax. If you saw my last video and how I cut out all the balsa parts by hand, you were probably like, dude, just get the parts laser cut, it's way faster. Well, that's exactly what I did. There were over 100 more parts to cut out, and it would have taken me ages to cut them all out by hand. So to save time, I had all the balsa parts laser cut. There are still some parts that I'll be cutting out by hand, which are the parts made from birch plywood. These are the main structural parts, like wing spars and the fuselage frames common to the landing gear. I chose to cut these out by hand mainly to save money since I already had a giant sheet of birch plywood. I'm about to glue the two spars that will connect the vertical fin to the fuselage. I 3D printed this alignment jig because the positioning of these spars is very important for three reasons. 
First is that these two spars will interface with two parallel frames in the fuselage, so the gap between the spars has to be precise and match the gap between the frames. Second is that the spars also have to be parallel to those frames so that they can sit flat and create a good joint. Third is the forward aft position of the frames relative to the vertical fin because this sets the actual position of the vertical fin on the airplane. The 3D printed jig was designed to have its gap match the gap between the fuselage frames, to set the spars parallel and vertical, and to offset the spars the correct distance from the front of the fin. So the reason I added that really thick balsa strip at the rudder split line is because of the way I'm planning to make the interface between the rudder leading edge and the vertical fin. I wanted the interface to be just like full-size airplanes, where the rudder has a rounded leading edge that nests inside a cavity on the back of the fin. This creates a very clean and aerodynamic interface with minimal gap. This differs from how many RC airplanes hinge the control surfaces. For example, here's the aileron on my E-Flight Extra 300. The hinge style features a taper on both parts, and the hinge is placed where the tapers meet. This definitely works, but as you can see, this creates a really large gap between the parts that isn't very aerodynamic.
So the vertical fin is mostly finished and it came out pretty nice. It's a little rough around the edges, but I'll take care of that once the airplane is fully assembled and ready for paint. The skin's released pretty clean from the molds, but there were still a few specks of primer that stuck. I'm not sure whether or not this confirms my theory of the primer having cured better on these parts, preventing it from detaching easily from the molds. Hopefully when I use PVA next time, I won't have any of that. The rudder split line I designed into the mold worked out perfectly. It left a nice groove in the skins that helped me create a really clean cut between the rudder and the fin. I also have to close out the base of the fin, but I can't do that until I install the rudder servo. I still need to glue the rudder into the fin, but I can't do that until I paint the rudder first. And that's because I won't have access to this leading edge once it's glued in place. And the last thing I have to do is recreate the back tip of the rudder. The fiberglass didn't drape into the mold as well as I was hoping, so it didn't make the full shape. I still need to figure out how I'll finish it, but I'll probably just cut the back bit off and 3D print an insert. That wraps things up for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.